My name is Daniel. I'm an author. I have written The Flying Scroll of Zechariah, and I have written The Everlasting Gospel. Search down to my lighthouse, the first one. It is The Everlasting Gospel. Sounds just like Moses. I dare anyone to tell me it does not. And so in this hour, it's time to forsake former desolate, devilish mentalities uh, for all followers of our comfort of love. And it's time that we realize that our Lord God has love greater than the unconditional love of a dog. Otherwise, we're wixing up our merge and accusing our Creator of having conditional love upon us when a little doggy meets him with love levels. <laughs> not going to happen people and so in this time it's time to realize that we should be much rather be spending all of our time near to the sound of chapel's bells if we wanted to be as good a people as we can but god loves us no matter what we do and it's time to realize that even if we go two steps forward and one step back since there is no good man that uh, it's time to realize that he loves all of us the same. Uh, so it's it's time, instead of just uh, uh, having lunch with one another, it's time to open up shop within the yard of hell to turn back the battle at the gates thereof so that some suffering souls might be spared from the horrendous flames uh, and not perish. Uh, so that they do not commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and be cast out into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let all men embrace the Lord's dove of love, for he is strong within us when we are weak. And know ye not that our Father of lights uses people who are weak enough to lean upon him? So please understand the, the great commission of love and the harvest thereof. Uh, it isn't an option to be considered, but rather it's a command to be obeyed instead. So it is time that we all must now start stirring up our love. For uh, many of us, we all started with our love uh, as a verb in motion as a child. But then we get old and we get bitter and unforgiving and then our love turns into a noun dead love, dead faith. So it's time to realize that there's nothing that could ever dim the Lord's most amazing light of love within us that's blazing away within all of his passionate and fervent believers. So thus saith the Lord, uh, Emmanuel, he says, I am Father God, who has now sent forth my third Elijah as a prophet that Malachi foretold. But know that the original Elijah shall also return as one of the two witnesses if the testimony of love herein flowing at this channel that restores all things by my unadulterated word alone is not embraced. For the Lord God says, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity and I shall never remember it. And if I remembered it, I would be a liar, and my word would be a lie, saith our majesty of majesties. So woe unto all those opposing him, for the Lord declares in the spirit that I, Daniel, have his authority even to curse men. But you know, I don't worry about cursing anybody. People curse themselves by their lovelessness. As they cast whatever upon the waters, that is what returns unto them. So God foresaw long ago that millions of people would convert to the faith of unconditional love in these last days. And to be opposed to that actually would be antichrist for one good reason. Christ himself predicted in the word of God in John 10 that he would arise as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, each and every one of us. And uh, so if we want to do his will and not be disobedient unto the Lamb, the roaring Lion of Zion, then we must embrace the unity of all, the oneness of all that stands under his magnificent light of love. In these last days, the world 
shall be astounded at the love that will be created within this coming harvest. Monies from all over the earth, Isaiah 61 says, will come and help sculpture this world into something like an Eden, the book of Joel says, ahead of us. And so this will not happen supernaturally. It is naturally going to happen one heart at a time. Once we realize that all the creation has been growing with great expectation for the revelation of who we are, the Bible says we are as angels, neither male nor female in the afterlife. The Bible says that the glory of his latter house are greater than that of the former. The Bible says that uh, the first are last and the last are first, and we have been created last because we are first, created at higher than the angels. And so in this hour, it's time to grab a hold of the sickle of love, the sickle foretold in Revelation 14. For I am the bringer of the sickle of love because I am the messenger of the covenant of Malachi 3.1. Lord Jesus Christ never uttered the words of Jeremiah 31 once. And it is said in the last days in Jeremiah 31 1 that it would be given unto Israel in the last days. And if that had not have happened since I have given that covenant, uh, then God would have been a liar. And if there had not been a latter day Daniel embracing his destiny uh, as Elijah in Daniel 12 13, God's book would have been a liar. So it's time to celebrate the truest truth that flows within the pages of the book of books. And let us be free indeed, for he who the Son of Love sets free is free indeed. So it's finally now the, the piercing time for a glorious two-edged gospel, a passionate one of Christ's most passionate good news of his unveiled unconditional love just as it is written in Isaiah 25, and the veil shall now be removed from off all nations, as the gross darkness of Isaiah 60 that has covered all mankind is shattered, and there goes the shattering of the power of the holy people, so that all people can realize that God has always loved us all equally, and anyone that has a respecter of man, a respecter of them, uh, them being their favorite, you know that they have a false God. And so in this hour, it's time to shine uh, as a blazing sword-like sickle of the Lord. So it's harvest time to let our love go forth. And nor shall its sharpest light come forth through his fiery power or his flaming might. For it is only through his beckoning dove 